Welcome to the second part of the Teardown scripting tutorial. In this video, I will explain entity handles which can be used to manipulate objects in the level. We'll use these to create flashing lights. I've prepared a simple scene with a light source. In order to reference the light source from a script, we need to assign a tag to it. You can use anything, it's just an identifier that we'll use in the script. The init function is a good place to retrieve handles from the scene. There are find functions in the API to search for entities of a particular type that matches a specific tag. In this case, we'll use the find light function to search for a light source with the same tag that we used before. The handle returned by a find function is just a plain Lua number, and we can store that in a global variable. Just to verify we found the light source, we can print the handle to the debug console and check that it's valid. Let's add the script to the scene and start the level. An output of zero means that nothing was found. This is because find functions only search entities that are children of the script node. So to make it work, we have to move things around in the scene explorer so that the light source is a child of the script node. Now, if we start the level again, we'll get a proper handle to the light source. Let's define a tick function to do something useful with the handle. Most API functions take entity handles as input, and in this case, we'll use the setLightEnabled function. It takes a handle to a light source and a boolean that tells the engine to turn the light on or off. Using a frame counter, we can implement a blinking light by periodically enabling and disabling the light source. This is what it looks like. Say we want to change the blink speed with a parameter in the editor. So instead of hard coding a number in the script, we can query it from a parameter. In this case, we'll use the getInt_param function to query a frame interval. Each parameter has a name and a default value. Now, if we select the script node in the editor and give the parameter some value, we can make it blink faster or slower. If we duplicate the entire lamp, including the script, we'll have two flashing lights, each controlled by a separate instance of the same script. Since the blink rate is adjustable, we can easily make them blink at different speeds. Using parameters in multiple script instances like this can be a powerful way to reuse scripts for multiple purposes, or controlling different parts of the scene. Using find functions to search for local entities like this is the most common use case, but it's also possible to search for entities globally in the entire scene. There's a global flag to the find function to do exactly this. Let's create a new script that alters the color of all tagged light sources in the scene. Instead of the find light function, we'll use the very similar find lights function that instead of returning a single handle, it returns an array of all matching handles. In order to change the color, we'll use the API function set light color with pulsating RGB values that we create using assign functions and a timer. Note that we have to loop through all the handles in the array and set the color of each one. Since this script searches for light handles globally, the hierarchy doesn't matter and it can be added to the scene anywhere in the scene explorer. Note how the three scripts seamlessly interact even though they affect the same lights. In the next video, I will show how to handle player input and create an interactive light switch.